right, right. Okay. What was I doing? Oh yeah. I need my my big bad car of doom. And then tune. No, this car's not get turbos. All right. We're going to crank her up to 598. Make sure we get everything else. And then we're going to hit 617. Alright, 617 horsepower and a car that weighs next to nothing. Reproduction, all good. I believe we have everything we need. Right, right. Let's do it. So we got a bunch of crap from the last event we did. Now we need to do this. <clears throat> yep, we're good. Alright. So forgive me if I'm a little quiet on this one. I'll just... <laughs> it's been a little long today. Ah, it's burning out in second gear. I think the vector does that. Ah! Yeah, this car fully upgraded is a complete rocket ship. You gotta be so careful with the throttle. Baba baby! I mean, this thing accelerates way faster than I can keep track of. That's why I say this is one of the top five like, fastest cars in the game. Not the best handling thing, I'll give it that. Oh, gosh, this is a rocket ship. It, it doesn't handle terrible, but it's a car from the 60s. It's a. Oh, jeez. I'm way too fast. I mean, you'd think this thing would be like a giant Miata, but you gotta just handle it a little bit better. But this isn't even the most powerful Cobra ever, even with all these upgrades. The Super Snake, the Super Snakes, the Cobra 427 Super Snakes, so two have ever been built. One was for Carroll Shelby, that was his personal car. The other one was built for Bill Cosby, which he promptly gave right away, right away, <laughs> are 800 horsepower versions of this car. But yeah, Bill Cosby gave it away. If, if you never heard that, he does a whole stand-up skit about it, too, and it's freaking hilarious. Yeah, I'm starting to remember how to drive this car. Very slow in the corners, rocket ship in the straights. Apparently just getting in it, starting it up once, scared the crap out of it, made everyone drive it. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm using this car again, I'm not using something else, but I'll sit there and thought, no way, there's nothing else I can think of that I would want to drive this type of race with when it has free horsepower. Then powerful cars in the game, so... Whoa! Whoa! Whoa car. 
well car. sound like a big snarling beast. That's what I love about it. Or is this like, I'm gonna grow? Give it the beans. Pacific, get out of here. Fifty thousand bucks and a new car. Can we just not get repeat Nissans and Hondas for once? I mean, heck, at this point, I'll take a Tia Toyota. <laughs> Any more Mazdas, more Subarus, more um, more good cars. Brindle, Brindlevard, Award. This is just the kind of tracks this car was built to tackle. Alas, not with this much horsepower. Try to at least get these three races done. Might do some other ones. Burn out second. <laughs> oh, you have a race car. I do have sports roadster. It's better than the easiest thing you can come up with. Catch up to him in the corners, that's nice. too fast. <laughs> oh! That could have been worse. Way too fast for this track. That's too fast. I had I oh I had to let off. <laughs> that is too much fun. the brakes. Did I ever buy the better brakes for this thing? It doesn't feel like it. The brakes feel squishy. So as of this recording, the new Top Gear was supposed to come on tonight, and I still haven't been able to catch it yet. It's just ticking me off. 
because I've been waiting for this new series for freaking forever. Series 22. They're finally going to put Top Gear America in their place because they're just terrible. I mean, I, I like Rutledge. I like uh, Kevin Ferrari. He's pretty cool. Tanner Faust. He's such a tool bag. I can't stand him. He's, just, he's so bland. He's not entertaining at all. He's not, and I don't trust anything he says because he's a drift racer. I can't trust them. They drive bad cars. Poorly. Or I should say, they drive bad cars very well, but they just make them drift. And it's like, it's just not, I mean, it's a form of racing, and I get it, but if a car was set up properly to go around the same kind of course, it would just, it would just thrash those things. So they're pointless. Anyways, somebody on Facebook, because they posted up, and I said, I said, sweet, I said, Top Gear Britain's going to take Top Gear America and put them in their place. And somebody's like, well, Tanner found she's a professional world-class racing car driver, blah, 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 and I just went, and my whole response to this, and I haven't even gotten a response back, was, Tanner Faust is the worst thing to ever happen to Top Gear. And I, I basically just said, your entire thing about him being a world-class driver means nothing to me. He's terrible at Top Gear. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a bad driver. I'm not saying he doesn't know anything about cars. He's just not entertaining, and I don't want to listen to what he has to say. <laughs> so, that's my whole thing at Top Gear America, and they just they don't really do the format right. It's just, I don't think it's done with it. It's like they're afraid, to, it's the show's afraid to, to uh, ruffle people's feathers, you know? You know, the British make fun of people in the Midlands. They say they're all kind of like fat, whiny people who just work in factories all day. And don't know, and are dumb. You know, that's what I've picked up from Top Gear. You know, it's like people, it's like, you know, I'm from the South. And the, the stereotype of the South is everybody's fat, lazy, eats a lot of fried food and doesn't want to work. And that's mostly true, actually. It's not so much a stereotype, it's, it's borderline truth. Now, there's a lot of people in the South that work hard. I myself work hard. I myself am not dumb, and I myself am not fat. Do I like fried foods? Yes. I'll admit. Give me some fried catfish, and I'll eat that crap all day long until I throw up. But, you know, not everybody in the South is dumb. Not everybody in the South is a bunch of white trash, ghetto, ghetto-fied idiots, wannabe thugs. It's a lot of them, but not everybody. There's a lot of cool people in this. I mean, I got a lot of friends that live here. Uh, no relatives though. They learned from our mistake not to move down here. My cousin was even like, "I'm gonna come down here and visit." And I said, "Nope." I said, "There ain't nothing to do. So you'll come down and visit." And after about two days, you go, "Yeah, this sucks." Oh, we're going to get in 55. But, uh, you know, it's like everybody in the Northeast pulks like this. Come on, we're going to go go to Boston, get in the car. You know, that's, that's the New England accent. You got the New Yorkers accent. They're like, hey, forget about it. And you got your Texas accent, where you got to pronounce everything wrong. West Coast has their own thing, which is kind of just normal. Midwesterners are probably only normal people in America. But there's a lot of dumb people in those states, too. So there's just a lot of dumb in this country, I'll admit. But any, any person in any part of the country that tries to, you know, say something criticizing someone else in this country is brought up with, oh, you're a racist. It's like, well, not everything that's brought up like that is about race, you realize. I'm saying people, I'm saying people in the South are dumb. Especially around the area I live in. There's a lot of dumb. They can't figure anything out because they're that dumb. So, it, it, it's it's very sad and unfortunate the area that I live in. 
there's, you can't criticize anybody for anything. Otherwise, you're seen as a racist. It's just the way people are in here. They can't let go of the Civil War. They can't realize that, you know, the Civil War ended, you know, 150 years ago. Get over it. It is time to move on. No one you know was in it. No one they knew. Not even people that they knew was in the Civil War. So stop it. It's over. It's done. What's done is done. It ain't going back. They ain't coming back. We're not going to have another one. And it's over with. Deal with it. Move on with your life. And there we go. So enough of my soapbox. Let's get back to talking about racing. Yeah, let's talk about Top Gear. Because I know that the, the Mexican embassy in Britain got all pissy with Jeremy Clarkson about making fun of Mexico making a uh, sports car. I thought it was funny anyway. So it's like, Mexico? They're making a sports car? <laughs> I mean, just it's just our country doesn't have that edge. They tried it, but it just came off as flat. Like, I remember when Top Gear America first came out, they said, Oh, Mitsubishi, they got a new Lancer Evo. It's a great car. You may know some of the other things that they make, like pianos and TVs. And the Zero, which was great for crashing into American warships. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, it's like... What? You see, the witty banter between the Germans and the British is funny. There's no witty banter there. That, that, that wasn't witty. You know, it just came off as just... And it was Tanner Faust that said that, and I was just like, Really? Come on, that's in poor taste. You know? Especially since I love the Japanese. They're great people. I mean, they just put up... They've, they've put all that behind them. God dang it, game, you did it again! So we got a Miata B-Spec. No, I did not want to sell that. I want to identify it. This B-Spec Roadster is Unos Roadster is a Unos Roadster equipped with B-Spec parts made by Mazda Speed. Under Japanese regulations, A-Spec parts are designed for use on ordinary roads. On B-Spec parts include items that require submission of an application for modification and result in an inspection certificate that reads modified. All this makes for a high-performance vehicle that is beyond comparison with the A-Spec model. The engine is available in one of three degrees of tune, stage one through stage three. Stage three is the most modifications, kind of like the Roush Mustangs, so surpasses the standard model that it seems like a different car altogether. The 1.8 liter power unit is bored out to whatever cubic centimeters, and four individual throttle bodies are used for precise fuel and air metering. The, those changes and an extensive range of advanced modifications all combined for a maximum output of 189 horsepower and a maximum torque of 143 pounds. Both power and torque near speedy. Both power and torque are instantly perceivable. The acceleration is exhilarating and engine rev up is instantaneous. The suspension features 12 damping settings from comfortably soft to race spec for firm. Burp. This combination of power and handling provides a performance that easily outdoes any new roadster. Baby. Basically, really light, really awesome. Spoon! The Tix car. Oops, I forgot. There you go for all the gearheads out there. Like me. I like to look at stuff like that. Integra Type R. That's actually a pretty good power to weight ratio on a front wheel drive car. Hmm. Using its racing know-how, Spoon Sports tunes Hondas to boost their performance, creating even more satisfying machines. One such creation is this car, the Spoon Integra R. The Spoon Integra R is a quintessential lightweight car that provides circuit-worthy performance without sacrificing comfort in everyday driving. The B18C Spec R engine is enlarged to the standard Spoon 2-liter size with its own pistons, conrods, cranks, and other parts, all built with an exacting precision with these and other parts that include its own original 4 into 2 into 1 exhaust manifold and air cleaner, spoon upgrades an already satisfying and powerful engine that takes it to the next level. The chassis features a racing, circuit-worthy suspension kit that revamps the standard suspension from the ground up. The lightweight 4-piston brakes and other suspension and wheel parts match the car particularly well, testing the spoon's status as an OEM parts supplier to Honda. 
Other upgrades, such as a compact battery and various carbon fiber parts, make the car lighter and stronger for a truly fast driving machine. Equipped with a lightweight carbon fiber hood, this car has already turned in the amazing time of 1 minute and 3 seconds at the Sakuba circuit, which is pretty freaking fast. So we got two of them. Same color, same car, sell, bonus money. Bam! Alright, we still got 10 minutes. Let's see, what can we do? Oh, I know what it's going to do. Where's my vector? Get in. The car's hungry. Well, sure, we'll go do this. Okay. Let's soften up the front end, give it a little more grip. Oh, it's already soft. Take it down to three. <laughs> Look at all these pitiful race cars. Oh, there's a Dodge Viper GTR. Well, uh, you need to step aside, Mr. Viper. Oh, they're not stepping aside. Okay, now they are. Looks like get wound up. The frickin' way. Is that a saline Mustang? That's a saline Mustang. Bye bye, babies. This ain't gonna be as easy as it looked. I'm taking a production car. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spank the butts with it. Whoa! Yeah, definitely got more grip in the front. That helped out a lot. I definitely feel the car turning better. Yeah, see, yeah. See? Production car. Taking it up against freaking race cars. Look what I'm doing. Veyron, get that piece of crap out of my face. This car doesn't cost half as much and it's freaking better. And it looks better too. I so wanted to use this for the 1980s races, but I couldn't. I love how you guys can kind of hear me working the throttle with that supercharger. <laughs> it's like a friggin' jet. You want to stay high. Oh! You stay pretty high in the corners. Maximum grip. Let's go. Winner is me. Oh, that was my fastest lap too, and I freaking hit the wall. I went over 200 miles an hour on that track. <laughs> oh, your pathetic race cars mean nothing to me. The vector dominates all. And you end up making a lot of money too. Yeah, we got time for one more. What's up next? Special stage rifle. Uh, let's go and get it out of the way. We can start the next uh, series off with a bang. With a fun track! And one that I really freaking like. I'd almost want to run Red Rock Valley. I wish they had an endurance race of that. So 
So I was thinking about some other racing games I could play that I don't have PlayStation 1. I think the next one I might do is... Is it going to be... I mean, this will be a while yet, because I'm going to really exhaust myself on this game. Oh, there's the GT40 race car in the Golf livery. Sucks. Your car is awesome. Your car is better than their cars. This Jeep Dodge Viper is freaking taking me to school here. Just gonna say, buddy. Bye bye baby! <laughs> yeah, turn 10, Polyphony Digital, somebody. Get this car back in one of these newer games. I want to see this thing in full HD glory and drive it in you know, an updated game. I will buy your next racing game if you put this in there. I need my vector. If somebody wants to make me some channel art with this car, please. My channel needs channel art. I got a friend. She's supposed to be getting one ready for me, but she's she's so busy with work and school and everything. She really got time. So my friend Sefi, you know, from the Final Fantasy LP. If somebody wants to put this car in that, I'll I'll put that up there until. Whoa! Sucked in the wall a little bit. Gotta go fast. Faster than Sonic. Oh yeah, I don't know if anybody's been watching Game Grumps. With Sonic Boom. Oh my gosh, that has got to be one of the most appallingly... Just... It offends me as a gamer. Like, I've never been the biggest fan of Sonic. I'll admit, it, I was a Mario guy. Mario kid growing up. No, I was a Nintendo kid. But I know Sonic play, has a place in video game history, and he's a really cool... He is a really well-designed mascot. I think he's great. I like Sonic. I do. What have they done to him? Mario keeps making good games, even though the new games are not as good as the old ones, but they're still good. Sonic! It's horrible! It's like he's supposed to be the fast guy in the party in that team in that game, but nobody else is just as fast, so, so what's the point? What's the point of Sonic? Okay, we gotta go. Come on. Sorry if I'm being a little quiet, I need to hurry up and finish this race. Really need to hurry and face the race. Oh dear. Here's one more lap and just got off the track. No, this track's actually not so bad. 
Grand Valley Speedway is awful. A couple laps around it's okay, but 60. I did 60 in a terrible car. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, hold it, don't hit the wall. Didn't hit the wall. <laughs> oh man, that was close. They're still pushing the front end. Maybe they're just stepping up the front end. Or maybe just. It is a little more balanced right now. Or maybe it's just the way the wheelbase is set up on this car it just doesn't have a good turning radius. I still remember the first time I bought this car in this game and I took it out and it was like, <gasps> this thing is awesome! I love it. It ain't the lightest car in this game, but god dang it, it's freaking fast! It ain't the fastest, I'll, ta I'll tell you that. It ain't the fastest, just one of them. Whew! Look at that. Oh boy. Yeah, they all finished. I just wanted to let them do that. Alright, so, there's all that. We will check out the next the new car next time. On Let's Play Gran Turismo, and it's going to be it for this weekend. My little recording sessions this weekend. Hopefully, I can start to catch to do some more later. So, until then, later, guys.